the Arduino Uno R3 has dominated the Arduino lineup for over a decade, but I think things are about to change a little bit because now we have the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi and the Arduino Uno R4 Minima. In this lesson, we are gonna take a close look at the R4 Wi-Fi. It packs two new processors, several hidden features, and 96 individual addressable LEDs, just to name a few of the new interesting aspects of the R4 Wi-Fi. We'll talk about all that stuff, plus a ton more. Let's go. So let's dive into the specifications. The Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi has an RA4M1 ARM Cortex M4 32-bit processor. That's compared to the Atmega 328P 8-bit processor and the Arduino R3. That is a 3x clock improvement. But the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi also has an ESP32 S3 on it, which clocks up to 240 megahertz. You'll notice the big difference between these connectors. This is a USB-B. Now we're down to this nice USB-C connector for the R4 Wi-Fi. You'll notice the pinout remains the exact same. We'll talk about some of the additional functionality you get on these pins, but as far as footprint goes, the R4 Wi-Fi should be a drop-in for the R3. In addition on the R4 Wi-Fi is a quick connector pin for connecting up different sensors, so you can add a sensor without having to solder anything up. There's also built-in peripherals on the R4 Wi-Fi, like an op amp, a digital to analog converter, and even a real-time clock, and they have connections where you can add a battery backup to the real-time clock so it can maintain time. And if you haven't noticed, it's got 96 individual LEDs in this big old matrix right here. It also has a CAN bus built in, making it easier to talk to automotive and industrial modules. Now, unlike the R3, the R4, and that's the Wi-Fi and the Minima actually, can act as human interface devices or HIDs. That means when you plug it in, you can make it act like a keyboard or a mouse, which is pretty neat. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment here. Now, what has stayed the same between here is these are both five volt boards. Now the ESP32 is still a 3.3 volt board and there are some pinout options just for the ESP32. So if you're gonna be working with that directly, you'll need to use 3.3 volt signals, but the rest of the board are all five volt. Now the input voltage on the DC jack and the VN pin for the R4 has increased all the way up to 24 volts. But it's worth noting that each GPIO pin can only supply eight milliamps of current as opposed to the 20 milliamps per pin limit on the Arduino R3. As far as memory goes, the Arduino Uno R3 had 32 kilobytes. Now we've got 256 kilobytes on this RA4M1, plus 384 kilobytes on the ESP32-S3. There's only two kilobytes of RAM on the Arduino R3, but we've got 32 kilobytes of RAM on the RA4M1, and 512 kilobytes of RAM on the ESP32. The EEPROM available is just one kilobyte on the R3 and eight kilobytes on the RA4M1. And I kind of already touched on it, but note that the footprint is the exact same. So any Arduino shields you might have are gonna fit on the exact same for these boards. So you can pretty much see by just about every facet, the R4 Wi-Fi is outperforming its predecessor, the Uno R3. Now you might be thinking, Wait a second here, why do they have two processors? The ESP32 looks like it's faster, has more memory, and built-in Wi-Fi and BLE. Why did they even bother with that Renaissance chip? Now, this is a very reasonable question, and I think it has an equally solid answer. First off, we need to understand what the Arduino team was after when they designed this new revision. They wanted a drop-in backwards compatible replacement for the Uno R3. Now, why would they want that? Why is that a good goal for them? Well, if you think about it, the Arduino R3 has been the de facto development board that's been used by millions of people for over a decade. There are more tutorials, code examples, libraries, and shields available for the R3 than any other Arduino board out there. So making the new revisions backward compatible with the hardware and the software means that the Arduino Uno R4 versions can leverage that existing environment for the R3. So what does backwards hardware compatibility look like then? Well, ideally, it means that the R4 Wi-Fi would have the same pinout and the same functionalities on those pins as the R3. 
And most importantly, it would need to have a 5 volt operating voltage, which is why just having an ESP32 S3 would fall short of that goal of backwards compatibility, which is why they chose this Renaissance RA4M1. Now, according to Arduino, there were several selling points for the RA4M1. First, it operates on 5 volts, which we said was important, and it has built-in overcurrent protection on its pins. And what that does is make it more robust for beginners. It also has the digital analog converter built in, an operational amplifier, and a built-in comparator. So those are some added benefits. And it also has an onboard USB interface. So you might recall that the Arduino Uno R3 used that Atmega 16U2 microcontroller onboard to control for interfacing with the USB. Not the case with the new R4. So let me just show you the pinout of the Arduino Uno R3. So here's the R3. We can see the pinout, you know, that standard pinout. You may or may not be familiar with it. If we compare that to the R4 Wi-Fi pinout, you can see we have the same functionality, that same standard functionality that we expect on a Uno board, but we get these additional functions on some of those same pins. And this really speaks to the thought that the Arduino team put in to backwards compatibility. Now there's actually even more functionality on these pins, but I don't think all of it is supported right now, but I have a feeling it's on the roadmap for Arduino. I'm also pretty excited that the new R4 processor uses a Cortex M series core. I've never personally developed with the Cortex M series, but my understanding is that it's pretty standardized and used by a ton of companies. Now it's worth noting that the RA4M1 clocks at only 48 megahertz compared to the possible 240 megahertz of the ESP32 S3. But my understanding is that the reason for this is a power trade-off. Since the RA4M1 runs at five volts, one way to keep the power consumption lower is to reduce that clock speed, which is why they went with the 48 megahertz. Now, I am not what you'd call a cutting edge kind of embedded developer by any stretch. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. But for the kind of control applications that I normally work with on an Arduino Uno, like reading sensors and turning on actuators, which I feel like is kind of the Arduino Uno bread and butter, I really never ran into clock speed issues. So when I see 48 megahertz, I think, hey, that's pretty on par for any use case that I'm gonna tackle with an Uno. Now, I know I told you that I'm not Mr. Cutting Edge, but there is a feature on the Uno R4 that will help some high speed folks. The ARM Cortex M4 has a floating point unit for performing calculations with floating point numbers, you know, like numbers with decimal points. So if you're trying to do some beefy calculations with decimal points, then you're in luck. Apparently, taking advantage of the FPU is seamless in your code. In fact, the compiler is going to see that you're doing calculations that can leverage the FPU, and then it basically hands them off to be accelerated. I think that's pretty neat. Now, some of the features on the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi really aren't that obvious. They're kind of hidden. But they add to the fact that Arduino has designed this board to be as beginner-friendly as the R3. So first off, the R4 makes adding things like motors and LED strips a lot easier because, like I mentioned earlier, it can handle voltages up to 24 volts, which can allow you to use a single power supply to power your Arduino and those peripherals. And it also has an enhanced thermal design that's going to reduce the temperature of the board when it's powered with these higher voltages. There are also several protections in place to help guard new users from frying their board. For example, they have reverse polarity protection and electrostatic discharge protection in the circuit board design. So if you accidentally try to wire in your power supply backwards, this is going to reduce the chance that the magic white smoke gets out. Not that I'd ever do anything like that. So even though you can't switch out the microcontroller if it were to get fried, like you can do with the R3 dip package, I think Arduino has really made it less likely that a beginner is going to fry the circuit in the first place. Now I know we already touched on the fact that the ESP32 S3 is the coprocessor on this board, but how do you actually use the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth? Well, it really looks pretty familiar. If you've ever used the Wi-Fi.h library, then all those same functions appear to have been implemented in the Wi-Fi 
s3.h library. So just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, if you have a project that connects to a wireless access point, say using an ESP32 with the Wi-Fi.h library, that same code could work seamlessly with your Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi by switching Wi-Fi.h to Wi-Fi S3.h. For using the Bluetooth low energy features, you would just use the Arduino BLE library. So that's pretty straightforward. It's probably familiar to a lot of people, maybe not everybody, but it does open up the door for tons of opportunities of people who want to build IoT devices. So yes, that might not be the most beginner application, but there is a new feature on the Arduino R4 Wi-Fi board that will help newcomers to programming. So if you have programmed for about, I don't know, one day, then you probably know all about cryptic error messages. But you know what's worse than a cryptic error message? It's when you don't get any error message at all. And that's what can generally happen if your Arduino board performs some type of fatal operation, like dividing by zero in certain situations. And it goes into la la land. So you don't get any error at all. Your board just kind of crashes and you're left wondering what the heck is up. So the new feature that the R4 Wi-Fi board sports is an error catching mechanism that apparently detects operations that cause a runtime crash, like dividing by zero or an out of memory error. And when these happen, an error will be sent to the Arduino IDE serial monitor that's supposed to give a hint as to what line of code might have been the culprit. So you'd get that error and then it would crash, but at least you'd have an error to kind of help you start your debugging process. Now, speaking of debugging, you may have noticed in the Arduino Uno IDE 2.0, there is debugging capability. With the debugger, you can step through your code line by line and see the values of different variables as the program's actually running. You can even change what the variables are to see what happens. It's an amazing, useful tool. Now, often external hardware is required, for example, using a J-Link for debugging microcontrollers. The Arduino R4 Minima has a serial wire debug pinout on the board so that you can connect something up like a J-Link and you can use the Arduino IDE 2.0 to debug it. But the R4 Wi-Fi are missing these SWD pins. Now I heard, but I don't want you to hold me to this because maybe I was dreaming, but I think at some point, I think we're gonna be able to debug the RA4M1 with no external hardware required. Apparently, the ESP32 would act as the debug unit, and that would be pretty awesome, but again, I think, I, I don't know, maybe I'm making this up. Now for this last part, I wanna take a trip down memory lane. Do you remember how fun it was blinking your first LED? For a lot of developers, blinking an LED is that first foray into programming actual physical stuff. As tame as blinking an LED might feel to you right now, when you write the code the first time to blink it, there is something magical there. It's like you feel like you're a wizard. It's just a really good feeling. So now people who grab this Uno R4 Wi-Fi board are gonna have an entire matrix of LEDs to play with. So like at its core, what is an Arduino Uno? It is a board for learning, for prototyping, and for building your own fun projects. Having all these LEDs on the board, I think is perfect for all of those use cases. And as you'd expect, Arduino has created a library for controlling the LED matrix using Charlieplexing. They also have an online graphics tool where you can easily design images and it even spits out code for you. So in addition to making your own graphics, they'll also have a bunch of pre-made graphics and animations you can use. Now the library is pretty straightforward, but I can see it getting way more interesting as more people work with it. So I guess what I'm thinking with this R4 Wi-Fi, I can prototype stuff with my Uno, but still do the Wi-Fi stuff. So I don't know, I guess the R3 has some new friends to hang out with. Now you might be wondering about this Arduino Uno R4 Minima. This is the other version of the new R4. Well, guess what? We have an entire separate lesson just on this R4 Minima that you can check out right here. In fact, I might have left out some stuff in this video that I cover in this video about these new R4 boards. So you might find it pretty useful. 